Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Now don't worry, you guys aren't the only ones that aren't watching the Olympics. Ravish, Ravish, my friend Ravish. Who is gonna watch the paint dry if we're sitting watching the Olympics, yeah? Who's gonna be there at the microwave staring at it whilst it goes round and round warming up our rice knowing they've got too much carbs and they're gonna go straight to the old belly. Is that stuff I've been doing? Am I projecting it on you? Well that's uh, for another discussion and another day. <laughs> A couple of videos back I covered the female Norway handball team who wanted to wear slightly longer undergarments because it was a bit embarrassing and they felt it was a bit sexist and because of that they got fined for it. <laughs> That's right. I'm seeing a trend now because even in these Olympics a German gymnast has decided to cover the, the bottom part of her body when typically that's not done yeah because again uh, because of sexism and because more and more women are wisening up to the fact that yo why on earth do we have to display our body when doing these sports activities when the men just spend their time flipping more clothes than us and just ogling at us and I know the Muslim women are like thank you this is what we've been telling y'all for all this time and this is why we cover up as well obviously they probably wouldn't be shouting like that and probably uh, better spoken than me. But the main focus of this video is judo yeah and two people in particular yeah. You've got somebody called Muhammad Abdel Rasul of Sudan who didn't face an Israeli opponent. Now it is unclear to what his motives actually were but the media and his opponent are more inclined to the fact that yo it's probably in solidarity of the Palestinians and because obviously he doesn't want to legitimize us. But whatever it is he hasn't come out and said anything yet. But the second individual, yes right, Fed Nureen. He is ranked 31. He's Algerian and he made it clear that the reason he didn't fight with the Israeli was because of the Palestinian cause. Yeah, he goes, we worked a lot to reach the Olympics but the Palestinian cause is bigger than all of this and because of this he lost his accreditation and he got sent back home. His coach told the Algerian media we were not lucky with the draw, we got an Israeli opponent and that's why we had to retire. We made the right decision. Now let's back it up for a minute right here. Hold your horses. The Olympics is the biggest competition these athletes get to compete in. These are the best athletes that these countries have to offer and they have been sent forth as beacons to represent these nations. For them to even qualify for the Olympics they have to be on peak performance. They have to be obsessed with their sport, training morning and evening and morning and evening, your dietary regime. You have to live and breathe the game and for him to discard all of that for his Palestinian brothers and sisters, Allahu Akbar. I mean I am in awe of this man. What sacrifice, what inspiration for the Ummah. In a time where some people are saying the Dajjal is gonna be here any minute counting down the seconds whilst others are so tired of hearing negative news and have lost hope. This individual, this individual exemplifies what the Quran is able to produce. Let's be frank, the Quran produced people like the Prophet وسلم, like Ibrahim, Musa السلام, then we had the Sahaba Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and then of course I'm not saying the calibers are, are similar but what I'm saying is the sacrifice. All of the people that I've mentioned they are special because of the sacrifice that they've made and nowadays people find it very difficult to sacrifice even their job for their salah, their money for the kids like sacrifice for the religion yeah, is very difficult especially when people are saying Palestine may even Arab countries are you know uh, turning their backs 
on the Palestinians. So for this individual to come forward and do what he did, yo, mashallah, may Allah bless you. And also the people that are making sacrifices on a daily basis, but they're unknown to you and me. Even if it's people that are boycotting Israeli products in their homes. Be it a few brands, I know you can't boycott everything. Be it a few brands, prominent brands that you're boycotting. So at least on the day of judgment, you can stand in front of Allah. So Ya Allah, I wasn't able to go and help them. I wasn't able to do this and that, but I did what was in my control, my power, the little that I could do. And this is what it is, yeah? We had Hajj that just finished very recently. And you can see the three Jamarat, the three pillars that as Muslims we throw the pebbles against because that's where the shaitan appeared in front of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But the question arises, why are Muslims still throwing pebbles? Does shaitan come and stand there? Of course not. What you're throwing at him is the sunnah. That's what you're throwing. You're throwing the sunnah at him. Yeah, you might not be able to do these grand, grand things, but don't give up on the small things that you and I do. Because the because Allah will deal with the oppressors. You know what I'm saying? Allah has a plan for them. But we need to do what we can from our side. Alright guys, let's leave it there. Until next time. Assalamu. Oh yeah. <laughs> and if it's any consolation, yeah, the Israeli guy lost in the quarterfinals. I, I just thought I'd uh, put that out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah, until next time. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>